Stay. Fred, stay. Fred's like, okay, I'm cool. I know this is kind of cheesy, man, but I made this for you, buddy. <laughs> so. That's pretty cool. You've been a veterinarian for 30 years, man. That's half your life, right? Coming up on 30 years, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I graduated vet school at 33, so I'm a late, I'm a late graduate, really. You are. Yeah, I'd say it's, it's the best thing I ever did in my life, and I really do love what I do, and I'm, I'm lucky that way. And there's the old clinic. That's really where my veterinary career took off. It was a corner grocery store, essentially. It was built in 1906. My mission's always been simple. Help as many animals as possible. What is this? All right, get a tube down. Give me a tube over here. Give me my stethoscope. We have no idea what we're dealing with. Print a catheter, get fluids in them. I don't have a heart. Boom. All right, let's get a catheter in, because it's, it's real slow, but it's there. One beat every six or eight seconds, really slow. A lot of people just tell us it's a dog, it's, it doesn't matter, but it's our family. So he's been my baby pretty much. I do think this is a lung heart issue. His lungs are filling with fluid and he can't breathe. If they have money, maybe like a $1,500 deposit? No, they have no. They, but they, just, have, just they have no money, they, they, live, they live in a car. We lost our home, we lost our friends, our family, everything. <laughs> and now we have Chico and Diesel and each other, and that's it. Bottom line, we're going to do what we can to give Chico a decent life forever, much longer he's going to live. Yeah, Chico, it's OK, bub. Oh, that's yeah. right. I have a question for yes. you. Can I hug you? <laughs> sure. Eric, just thank you for loving an animal so much that you're well, going to help my baby. We'll try to get him home to you, but hopefully we can buy some good, you know, quality time. No, okay. Thank you so okay. very much. Thank no you. Problems. I'm always going to try to help people that really care about animals. Being on TV has made a difference, you know, in terms of more people are aware of us. People just show up. Many times, we're the animal's last hope. A gentleman just came in with a kitten they found in the dirt at a construction site. Oh, God. It's not moving. Ah, God. Oh. Semi-comatose, cold, doesn't have a blink reflex. It's not good odds. With the kitten not having an owner or not knowing where it came from, the guy put his credit card down. Well, that's a good Samaritan. I figured while I'm waiting, I can get this no. We gave him a little bath and he started to wake up. Hi! What? Hi! Hi! Oh my goodness! My okay, little man. You know, when we opened that place up, it was definitely different. It was just a spay neuter clinic. Then we started doing abscesses and some dentals. Then we slowly kind of worked into doing some bone surgeries and, uh, you know, and then once we got a reputation for doing bone surgery and stuff like that, then it just crescendoed after that. The man, the myth, the legend. I'm gonna wear this every day. I love this shirt. <laughs> Do you love that we're wearing your face on our shirts? No, it's kind of creepy, actually. <laughs> All these people are, are not just my employees, they're my friends and they're my family. Happy birthday! Which is kind of cool, seriously. Nah. Have a goat off. Uh, no. Nah. Was it, was that sound realistic? <laughs> Like, what the hell? What is that? Yeah. People kept showing up at the old clinic. I physically cannot get any more animals in the door. I mean, we've maxed out here. The only way we're going to be able to help more animals is to expand. And this new opportunity came up, so we bought this new place. Last thing it was was a church. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. Oh, we are here to talk about spay neuter. I think the new clinic is going to be fascinating. It's just incredible, and it's, it's going to be so much more efficient and just so much better for our clients and the help animals. The old surgery room is basically this right here. This is three times the size.
most of those people are still with us. There's Dr. Amy and Dr. Don, Susan, Shelly. So we got everybody. Dr. Byer. I mean, I'm really glad we got Byer. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Just yeah. let him calm down a bit. All right, Dr. B, what's it like working with the film crew? I like the high-tech equipment that Callie uses. It's special. <laughs> everybody that watched the show knows that I'm the one that does the, the weird animals. Well, the benefits of neutering this wallaby is, one, he'll be a lot calmer. Come on, Sam. No. Do not electrocute yourself before the procedure starts. Uh, all right. I worked in zoos for 14 years, so, you know, wallabies are a common species, wallabies and kangaroos. The scrotum hangs a lot lower than it would in a dog and kind of has this little stalk here. That's... And his penis is down there. <laughs> That's normal? <laughs> I've never seen a wallaby penis, so. The anatomy is partly due to evolution and partly because, you know, he's from Australia, so things are upside down. I haven't worked with exotics in school. You know, we get, we got virtually no exposure in school. So, I mean, and that's his specialty. But uh, you know, it's, it's cool to see other animals. Okay, one, two, three. Just look like dinosaurs. So, <laughs> here we go. You are the, the toughest chinchilla in the land, huh? You know, I grew up on a farm, so I think the interest was there when I was a little kid. I've just always been an animal person. <laughs> Hang on there, kiddo. I've oh. got some turtles. You got a whole little pack in there. What Red are eye. they here for today? I want their beaks look fat. The trick is to go slow, so I don't take too much off at a time. I didn't decide to be a veterinarian until I was in college. Um, I ended up in a, in a biochem class with all the pre-vet students and was like, hey, these are my people. This is PFU, pink fluffy unicorn. My experience with unicorns is limited. There aren't a lot out there that come, you know, come in for, for neutering. I've always done exotics throughout my whole career. So, you know, I, I look forward to those types of appointments. Howdy. Hi. I'm, I'm Dr. B. Pleased to meet you. So this is Hook here. This is Hook. It's rare to see a captive possum. In fact, this is my first one in the clinic. Having him neutered wouldn't be a bad idea. It'll help make him healthier or longer. Is there some place that he could be at so he could have more room to move around? I used to work at the Denver Zoo so I could check with them. I love him, but I just feel bad he has to stay in the cage. Pat's done a great job of raising Hook, but I agree with her. It's it's time to get him into a new place. Oh, honey. I'm gonna pee all over Shelly. And I think he might be. He just got real not cute. We have one of our newest animal ambassadors here to meet you today. His name is Hook, and he is an opossum. The animal got a great home at the zoo and is doing good. It's amazing the things that we get to do that I really wouldn't get to do in most of the clinics in the country.